Ah, Oprah, Oprah, Oprah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it says here, Oprah threatens Cat Williams for exposing her for being a Hollywood handler. Look, man, for all the people who are on the same level as far as thinking like this and knowing what goes on in this Hollyweird, I appreciate y'all. For those of you who don't understand, pay close attention. This man, Cat Williams came out and it just, I mean, took over the internet and everybody's mad. Everybody's mad because when the truth comes out, all right, we ain't gonna waste no more time. Let's jump right into it. <laughs> it's gonna be in a dimension that's mm. never been. Yeah, it's gonna be. A, it's gonna be a, <laughs> the greatest thing floating in 2024. Mark the words. No way. <laughs> and and what he's talking about right here, because I seen this, is basically, um, Shannon Sharp said, "Man, I ain't gonna be able to get nobody else on this show now." or whatever, and they were just talking about how it's gonna break the internet. He took a picture with Cat Williams before the episode, and I think it said like 45 million the last time I checked views. In a, in a whole different realm of business. <laughs> Oprah coming next. <laughs> <laughs> Once I establish this as a place of truth. Yeah. Oh hey. yeah. Watch. Watch! God's people ain't that few. <laughs> Prince. Y'all, so it looks like the battle line has been drawn between Oprah and Cat Williams because Oprah is now threatening to ruin Cat's life after he embarrassed and exposed her as a handler for the Hollywood elites. Let's but y'all know that Cat never backs down from a fight and he is now fighting back at Oprah and threatening to release more tea on her and take her down completely. Y'all better come on inside the room cause listen, this chaos is about to get real. Some of us are against the Illuminati and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. Mm. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them and nobody likes them. Okay, so it looks like Oprah is sick and tired of people trying to drag her and she has finally decided to speak up and stand up for herself against the accusations. And she decided to go after none other than Cat Williams. Oprah has been in the news these past couple of weeks after Taraji started a conversation about her and how she doesn't look out for black women in the industry like she pretends to. Now for a very long time, Oprah has been said to be something of a champion for black rights in Hollywood as well as a philanthropist. But Cat is now coming out to prove that not only is Oprah not the good person we think she is, but she is way worse than we could ever imagine. But get this, it goes way beyond Taraji because according to Kat, Oprah has been playing in our faces for the longest time. Kat hey. claimed that Oprah has been used by the higher ups in Hollywood to keep black artists in line and keep them dancing to their tune. He pointed out how Oprah has been putting down her fellow black artists for years, pointing out how she did ludicrous dirty and had him looking stupid when he went on her show to promote the movie Crash. Back in the day, Oprah's show was where all black artists went to promote their new movies, music, and whatever they had going on. But sometimes, Oprah would suddenly switch up and decide to make some of the artists look bad, and that's what she did to Ludacris. During the interview, Oprah decided to shift course from the talking about the movie and Ludacris' role in that movie, and she decided to start pressing him about his music and why he used the N-word in his music, even though the interview had nothing to do with his music. Ludacris definitely wasn't feeling it, and he called her out on the radio interview about you know I was, I was there for a crash for the movie yeah and basically she said something about not agreeing with my music but she thought i did great in the movie and of course i was up there with the whole imagine oprah not agreeing with the music but being cool with harvey weinstein think about that for a minute think about that and me personally, I don't really care for all the, like, as I got older, I started to get away from all the music like that. Uh, but just imagine her being cool with Harvey Weinstein, but having a problem with this music. All right. Cast of Crash. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't necessarily feel like that needed to be said. You know, mm -hmm. you didn't agree with my music. And even if you don't agree, 
with certain songs I made, say you don't agree with certain songs, don't say you just don't agree with all of my right. music. Right, right. But that's not all, because when the Ludacris interview with Oprah aired on her show, she went on to edit and cut out certain parts of Ludacris's response to her questions mm. to make him look bad. She was able to say what she said, and then I, I had my rebuttal, and when I saw the final show, her, her comments were in there. Yeah, it was in there, but yours wasn't in there. And mine weren't in there, so it just looked like I kind of took it. Wow. Like was just quiet and didn't say that. Now, according to Kat, what we're seeing is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to her using her platform for all the wrong reasons. And he didn't hold back, throwing some major shade her way for the way she tried to destroy Michael Jackson's legacy. Now, let's rewind to 1993, when Michael Jackson, the king of pop, granted Oprah a rare interview at his Neverland Ranch. Now, that's a big deal, because we all know how guarded MJ was about his private life. The exclusive sit-down catapulted Oprah. Oprah's fame even higher, not just in the US, but globally. And for years after this, she claimed to be MJ's friend. But here's where it takes a turn. Fast forward to Michael's passing and Oprah did a complete switcheroo. She hopped on the controversy train surrounding the Leaving Neverland documentary, putting MJ in a not so flattering light. She took it up a notch by dedicating an entire segment to interviewing MJ's former accusers, Wade Robson and James Safechuck. Now that move alone stirred up a ton of controversy because both Wade and James had backtracked on their earlier claims, swearing under oath that MJ didn't SA them like they initially accused him of. So what was Oprah doing when she was giving these guys a platform to reopen the whole Michael Jackson case? It felt like she was trying to throw shade on MJ's legacy by getting people to talk about it all over again. She tried to defend herself when she claimed that she was just shedding light on the widespread patterns all about this Brazilian guy she yeah. called himself John of God, claiming to be a spiritual so he alone. Well, Oprah didn't just talk the talk, she hopped on a plane to Brazil to meet him. And she was so thrilled about the whole thing that she even brought him on her show. And this is where it gets absolutely crazy. Oprah stayed connected to the John of God for a good couple of years, but then bam, the guy gets exposed for some seriously messed up stuff, child and human trafficking. Turns out he had women chained up against their will, forcibly impregnated them, made them have babies, and then get this, sold the babies for profit for their organs. I mean, hey. that's next level disturbing. Man. And since Oprah was all linked up to this guy, of course she got dragged into that mess. But Oprah played it cool like it never happened. No apology, no explanations, nada. All she did was hit the delete button on the videos of John from her page and that was that. No official statement from her, no distancing herself from the scandal. It was like we was in the twilight zone, like we didn't see what we had saw. Like John never existed in Oprah's world. And if you're scratching your head wondering why this wasn't plastered all over the US media? Well, Kat claims that Oprah's got some powerful friends to thank for keeping that stuff on the low. Now remember how we said that Oprah is such a great philanthropist and that she opened a school for girls in South Africa? Well, it didn't take long for the school to be dragged into some more concerning controversy. One of the school matrons was arrested on SA charges for being inappropriate with the female students, which is absolutely sad. Singer Seal also hinted that Oprah was lying about not knowing of Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein's crimes. He made a post on Instagram saying, Oh, I forgot, that's right. You'd heard rumors, but you had no idea he was actually seriously a young starry-eyed actresses who in turn had no idea what they were getting into. My bad, sanctimonious Hollywood. But the interesting thing about this is that suddenly still faced battery charges only five days after calling Oprah out. The charges of course were dropped after a few days, but the interesting thing here is that an inside source revealed that Seal's accuser reported the singer to police in Los Angeles after she noticed that he had accused Oprah Winfrey of knowing about Harvey Weinstein's on, offenses in a damning Instagram post. Well, according to Kat, this was not a simple coincidence because Oprah attempted to take Seal out and land him in jail, even though he was innocent of all the allegations that she brought against him. But that didn't matter to Oprah. She just wanted her lick back at all costs, even if it meant getting an innocent black man in trouble. Now, all this happened a while ago, and the rumors of Oprah being a handler just kind of died down after that, until Taraji's revelations a few weeks ago. Taraji went full on truth bomb, admitting she was sick and tired of being shortchanged, getting anything but what she rightfully deserved. But she wasn't just talking, she was ready to walk it. Ready to walk it like she tuck it, walk it, walk it like she tuck it. In fact, she dropped Dang. the bomb when she almost walked away from the Oprah movie Color Purple, because the offer that Oprah made was just too low and frankly insulting. 
I haven't seen a raise in my income since Proud Mary. And almost had to walk away from Color Purple. What? Yes, ma'am. Who said what? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Because you know what? If I don't take a stand, how am I making it easy for Fantasia and Danielle and Hallie and, and, and Felicia? Then what, why, why am I doing this? She also went on Gail King's show and she was so upset that it drove her to tears. I'm just tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do, getting paid a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of hearing my sister say the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. um, you get tired. Mm -hmm. I hear people go, you work a lot. Yeah. Well, have to. Mm -hmm. The math ain't mathin'. However, fans weren't exactly thrilled with Gail's interview tactics. They felt like she tiptoed around the real issues that Taraji fired up on because she's very close friends with Oprah. See, Gail's been vocal about how Oprah gave her her career boost and they're basically besties. Well, fans had this theory that Gail held back on pushing Taraji because she knew the real talk might shine a not so flattering light on Oprah. But yeah. here's the kicker. Turns out, Gail's protective moves weren't needed. The internet exploded with folks coming for Oprah, digging up her not so great track record of treating black women in the industry. Well, this is where Cat Williams stepped in and threw some major shade at Oprah, accusing her of trying to handle Taraji and keep her down. They're vastly underpaid and say the math is not mathing. They get X amount of dollars by the time Uncle Sam get his cut, by the time the agency get their cut, and what you see they were supposed to get is a fraction of that. Where, where, where do you come down on that, Cat? It was the saddest thing ever because imagine Imagine being in your genre, in your sub-niche, whatever it is. Imagine being in your lane. Imagine being one of the very top of your lane. That to the point where if they don't take you for the role, there's not three black actresses that they can say are bigger than you that we're going to give this to. Imagine you being at that point and have to humble yourself and say, they're not paying me, y'all. And they're not making my pay go up because I'm doing better or nothing. It don't matter to them that I'm famous and people know me or nothing. They want to pay me exactly what they paying the new girl. And I've been suffering under it for a, de a decade now. Cat also had some specific words for Oprah, hinting that he had dirt on her and that he would take her down. This thing floating in 2024, mark the words. No way. In a, in a whole different realm of business. <laughs> Oprah coming next. <laughs> <laughs> Once I establish this as a place of truth. Yeah. Oh yeah. Watch. Watch! God's people ain't that few. <laughs> well, according to an insider, Oprah is not here for Kat speaking on her like that, and she has allegedly been making plans to ruin Kat before he spills more tea on her. The insider claims that Oprah is furious at Kat and has been making threats at him, trying to get him to recant his statement, but if y'all know Kat, then you know this is never gonna happen. Well, fans have left comments on this saying, Oprah is somehow always associated with serial SAers and pet files, a very dangerous and evil woman. Oprah is a groomer and a handler. Look back into her school in Africa. Look who she has hung out with her whole life. Sex predators. We see you, Oprah. Sold her soul to get what she has. And I don't know how Oprah still ain't get her ish lit up on the media. She evil as hell. Y'all fans are not here for Oprah and it looks like Kat is untouchable to her because he has the backing of the people of the streets. Anyways, drop me down in the comments below and then check out this next video. Man, it's it's like so bad. It's so it's it's just frustrating because you still have a lot of people who don't understand or don't believe it or maybe not even just care. I'm just saying, like at the end of the day, you got to know who you are supporting. A lot of these people, a lot of your favorite stars, your favorite music artists, your favorite whatever, they are involved because in order to get where they get, they had to do what they had to do. A lot of them didn't think it would be what it is, but it is what it is, and they stuck. They can't go back because uh, they already done signed their name on that dotted line, and and they they just stuck. So they that's why you don't see a lot of people speaking up or speaking out is because they can't because they're part of it. They've been witnessing witnessing things and and there's nothing they can really do about it 
you know, it's the price of fame. It's the price of fame. The more you do, the higher you go and you get put in position to basically recruit. And I feel that's where Oprah is at right now. Appreciate y'all coming over and watching, man. Peace out.